What up y'all, this is Patrick Hayes. In this video, what I'm gonna share with you is a really powerful framework for being able to solve your own problems, for you to be able to deal with your own problems and not either miss the problems or not get stuck inside your problems. So if you stick around to the end of this video, you're gonna understand this framework and it's gonna be really, really useful for you to apply to any issue or any problem that you have in your life. It's a really simple framework for how to stay balanced on the path of solving your problem. And like I said, not get stuck inside the problem, but then also um, not miss the problem, not let it go unnoticed until it has to come around and kind of like invade your reality with a more drastic effect because you ignored it, right? Because essentially there are, there are two different kind of um, polarized, like negative ways of going towards solving a problem. One is ignoring the problem right, avoiding the problem, right? And the other one is getting stuck inside the problem. So spending too much time kind of like, you know, in, in the shit and not actually in the solution, okay? So it's really common in like the new age community to think of the idea of law of attraction, what you focus on is what you create and think that if they actually focus on the problem or look at the problem at all, that that's actually gonna create more of the problem or make it more real. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't look at the problem, then it becomes a shadow. And then that shadow starts either puppeting your behavior unknowingly, or it's something that you put off for so long that it comes crashing down into your reality because you've just been ignoring something. It's like, if, you, if your room is messy, you can't just like ignore that your room's messy and expect it to get cleaned. You have to actually clean it. You have to like be aware that the room's messy. You have to be aware of the problem, whatever it is. And you have to be focusing on the solution. So it's not like you focus so much on the problem. You have to focus on the solution because the other side of this is getting stuck in focusing on the problem. And this is like sitting in your own shit, right? So the other side is this pessimistic view where you have a problem and you're always thinking about the problem and you're always redefining to yourself why this thing happened or digging up all the details that led to this problem and going over it and over and over and over in your head and kind of bathing in it, keeping yourself stuck inside the problem. And this is not a good approach either. This is the other polarization, right? So there's avoidance and then there's like uh, pessimism or like sticking inside of it. And this is actually really common too for a lot of people that have, have gotten good at pointing problems out, which is a good thing. I mean, you can see this in like a, a cultural view with a lot of people in like the postmodern movement that are just pointing out all the flaws in the system. Well, it's good to be able to point out the flaws, right? You have to be able to have that discernment. At least you're not avoiding things, right? It's good to be able to point out what the flaws are in the system and within yourself. If you get on like a weird kind of like drama vamping cycle with this, where you start feeding off of like the stress or the drama with having like an identity of not being able to do something or being stuck in some way or being oppressed in some way or like these issues with the world and like how everything's so fucked up and like, oh, this is so terrible. If you get stuck in that, then you just get stuck in a perpetual cycle of shit and you can't get out of it. So the idea is to really come to the center. You wanna actually be putting your focus on the solution, but you can't put your focus on the solution until you've defined the problem. So the idea is you identify the problem, but then you really quickly start moving into solution mode, right? So it's almost like from the beginning, when you start discerning that there could be some sort of thing that has room for improvement, the idea is that's how you wanna look at it. This has room for improvement. How can I improve this? What is the solution here, right? So realize that the second you identify a problem, if you're identifying it as something, and it's really not a problem when you look at it deeply, what it is is it's just an opportunity for growth, right? And that's the point I'm trying to make. So when you identify an opportunity for growth, you're looking at it from the frame of, well, there's a way to improve this, right? When you're identifying it as a problem, this is like, there's something wrong, there's something bad. And you know, while whatever you're dealing with might not be your preference, to look at it as something wrong or as something bad is gonna have a kind of charge to it that, that magnetizes you in. Because negative kind of problem crisis kind of things have that kind of magnetization to them. And you know that they have that because look at what everyone clicks on on the internet. Everybody's really interested in these things. Well, you know, and it makes sense evolutionarily too because you know, if you're walking through the forest, it's really important for you to be aware of that bear. Right, so all your attention is going to go to that bear. So threat is really important. But the truth of the matter is, is those kinds of life-threatening things 
aren't, you know, there's not like alligators and, and tigers like popping out from behind the walkways around our house. Like that's not what it is. But still we have that evolutionary sense where we're always focused on what could be the problem. So we're always clicking on things like, oh no, crisis, oh no, that. And, and this is actually what's going on inside our heads too and as we're scanning through our reality. So we have to transcend that and start seeing that those things that we don't prefer are not tigers that are gonna eat us, but they're actually opportunities for us to better ourselves in some way. And when we see it from this frame, we can actually start focusing on the solution from the beginning. So we don't get caught in the avoidance because we're willing to actually look at what the problem is. We're not saying like, oh, the law of attraction says that if I look at this, that it's going to create more of the problem. It's like, no, I'm willing to look at this issue. I'm willing to look at the issue that maybe I'm not being the healthiest in my life, right? I'm willing to look at that. I'm not just gonna say like, no, I can eat nothing but cheeseburgers and ice cream for the rest of my life and I'm gonna flutter around like a butterfly. Like we don't tell ourselves these lies trying to avoid it. We actually look at the situation and say, but what's the solution here, right? Where is the opportunity for me to progress, to evolve? And that is solution-based thinking. This is the middle path, right? I don't want to get stuck in it. Oh, why do I eat ice cream? Oh, it's because I was abused as a child and, the, uh, 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 and like all this stuff. You could get all stuck in that and reinforce the problem, right? You could avoid it and say, oh, there is no problem. I can just close my eyes and think positively and avoid it. And these are the two polarizations, right? These are the two, say like tricks or traps that keep you stuck. The idea is what is the solution? I've noticed that I'm eating too many cheeseburgers and too much ice cream. I'm not eating a healthy diet. I'm noticing that. What's the solution? How can I create a more healthy lifestyle? How can I get myself more motivated to be healthy? How can I set situations up in my life so that the circumstances are supportive of the new kind of dietary lifestyle that I want to live, right? How can we focus on the solution? And then the idea of law of attraction, the idea of what you focus on, you create more of, becomes really useful because you're focusing on the solution, right? You're gonna get more of the solution when you focus on the solution, right? And that's how you use that. You have to be aware of the issue, but you have to focus on the solution. And I know to a lot of you this might seem really obvious, but it's something that's really tricky. Everybody deals with this on a regular basis. I deal with this on a regular basis. It's often that something comes along and my tendency is to spin a little bit too hard into like, oh no, oh, this sucks, or like, why did that have to happen to me? Like, yeah, everybody gets into this space to a certain time, so it's important to really be aware that the second you notice yourself going into that spin, to be like, nope, solution, solution orientation. How can I solve this problem? What is the solution to this? And at the same time where it's like, oh, I don't really feel like having to look at that thing. Like maybe, uh, maybe it'll just go away if I don't pay attention to it. And this is a thing that everybody has to deal with. So even though this might seem obvious, Everybody has to deal with this. The subconscious direction of your attention that is programmed based off of what your subconscious beliefs of what is important are, right? This can be reprogrammed to focus on solutions so that on a regular basis when you're going through your life, when you get that trigger of fear like, oh no, there's an issue, or that thing is kind of creeping up like, you know what, there's something you should be focusing on, there's something that you haven't been paying attention to, there's some sort of problem you need to learn. When these things start creeping up, that you can be like, focus on the solution. Look for the opportunity. And when you focus on that central path, then you won't find yourself getting stuck in avoidance or in the over-perpetuation of the problem. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe. If this video was useful to you, share it with some of your friends. Maybe it'll help one of them too. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I'm excited to talk to you next time. One love.